Hello, and welcome to another episode of 72 Pin Connector. With us today, we have Tom Webster. Boom! Adam Jordan. <laughs> Hello. And myself, Eric Fine. How are you guys doing this week? Oh, pretty great. Well, you know, around the holidays, I, I really feel like punching some dude's face clean off. It's, it's great. At least, at least one of us has had that feeling. <laughs> Man, someone's been playing a little bit too much of one fucking game. Uh, maybe just a little bit. But what have you been playing this week? Yes, Adam. We'll let you lead this conversation. Okay, well, first, actually, I played some CSGO with Tom and Jesse, which was kind of fun. I'm really bad at CSGO, though, so... <laughs> you killed a dude, though. It was only... Yeah, I did. I killed a man in Reno just to watch him die. Um, but... Wow. No, it was fun. It, it's kind of cool to pick up a game like that that I... I never really put much time into it or anything, but... Yeah, random I, games with friends are fun. I am, games you don't normally play. That's kind of interesting. I am absolutely terrible at it. I only <laughs> enjoy it if it's a LAN with, like, eight people playing, or it's... Oh, game. yeah. <laughs> Gun game is that was a lot of fun. Decent at. at Tom's house that time, where we yeah, woke up and played life. CS:GO for like four hours. It was um, amazing. I play, so I played that. Um, the Witness, I have kind of finished. So I finished the 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 non secret kind of stuff. <laughs> okay, so without spoilers, I have yes. to ask: What did you think of everything leading up to the ending? Very cool. Very cool. Um, the initial ending before I realized that there was more, I was disappointed. The initial but, ending made me think kind of a religious tone. You, yeah. You're going you're gonna to finish the game, but it's not over. <laughs> it's not over. There are more things. It's going to do something that's going to make you scream, want to throw your mouse or controller through whatever device you're viewing the game with, and just pull out <laughs> all of your hair. <laughs> but it, it's cool. There's a lot of cool things to discover. Um, the The other ending is very interesting, what it implies. Um I like actually, I said, we can't spoil anything, so I'm not even going to elaborate on how or what any of these things are. But if you if you feel like you finished the game and it just falls off and you think it's stupid, there that's not it. There's more to discover. Yeah, and honestly, even before you beat the game, I really think you're going to be like your mind's going to get blown. Is the only way I can put it. Yeah. There's just this huge, like, out of nowhere, holy fuck moment. This just got awesome. <laughs> and then you play the game our, for 10 more hours. Yeah. If our listeners remember, a couple podcasts back, I, I said that The Witness was a game about drawing lines on squares. Um, and without going into spoilers, I will say that that's, that's vastly it. underselling the game. Um that literally every single object in the witness is not there by chance. Jonathan Blow has expertly crafted this game. Uh, not a single blade of grass is out of its place. And, and looking at the game from a new perspective, and I haven't even beaten it yet. I'm just, I'm getting there. I'm getting close. It's really given me a brand new appreciation for the amount of just incredible craftsmanship that went into that game. Oh yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Um, so I did that. Um, and then, obviously, I've been playing a lot of Rocket League, as I always do. But they announced an update recently, actually. So I'm excited for that. What all they got going on? Let me pull the page up. So they, ac they actually they revealed the update at the Game Awards. Some of it, but they didn't actually show everything. They showed the trailer for the new map, which, if you've played it, is the Octagon map from Rocket Labs. So they're skinning that with the space theme, which is pretty sweet. The octagon then they, is that huge open. Yeah, it's the big one. It's <clears throat> it's a pretty big map with you know obviously it's an octagon. Um, but they're skinning that with the space theme, which is awesome. Um, it's called Starbase Arc. Hmm. Hopefully and they then, learned uh, the lesson. Yeah, <laughs> Supp supplementing that is another car. It's going to be a DLC car, so it's the two dollars or whatever. Um. Looks very cool. 
kind of a spaceshipy looking futuristic car. A uh, new series of crates with new items in it. A uh, particular item is the import version of the Octane, which is probably the most popular car in the game. So people are excited about that. Um, a custom training mode. So you can make your own shots and share them with people and, and this practice. This looks amazing. Yeah. Um, I wish other esports games had something even close to this. Well, I think this yeah. is what happens when a game is actually the developers are this close with the community. Because, I mean, oh, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, Adam, this is something that modders have been doing for a while with the game to be able to train. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and actually this is... The, the mods available that do this do more than what this is going to do. But this, you know, this expands it to also the console players. So they'll be able to, to do these custom training options. But even the devs said, uh, one, one of the, I think it's like the lead design director, he, I mean, they all post on Reddit sometimes and answer questions and whatnot. And they said that, no, this isn't going to replace some of the other more detailed mods, but you know, you can still use those other mods for that. And then this, you know, at least opens it up for like the console people and the, the more casual players too. And and with that, Steam Workshop support. That is the biggest big news. deal. Very it big is deal. This is huge. Yes. So custom maps are going to happen, I believe. You can. Uh, I don't know what else. I don't know what all it's going to support right off the bat. But definitely levels for sure. There's two and things. Obviously, the shot packs. Hmm? Two things come to my mind with that Steam Workshop. Yeah. Custom skins. Yes. And custom people are cars. already doing that. People are already doing custom skins. But the custom skins are doing only reflect on their own game, though, right? Right, yeah. Other people online cannot see those. So you get um, an actual mod through the uh, workshop. Everyone can see it. Yeah. So, I mean, that'd be kind of cool to be able to start teams Well, maybe. Getting, I'm not sure. I would assume they would have it if they put it through the workshop, be able to put things yeah. out there. Teams actually start putting their names and stuff on different skins. It'd be kind of cool. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be really cool. It's the Rocket League uh, equivalent of wearing someone's jersey. Yeah. Having that team oh, skin yeah. on your car Absolutely. driving around. <laughs> and, and this, um, this also, seems like a, a small update, but I'm seeing colorblind support on here, which is yes. that's, that's huge. No, this for, is a big uh, update. These are, all, these are all big updates. These are most of the updates have been like this. So yeah, colorblind support is great, especially because they expanded in the last update the the color, the amount of colors you can pick for your primary color of the cars. So they added like the green colors for the blue team, and some different shades for the red team or the orange team. So this is good for them because that that can get a little blurry for for certain people. Um, also, new arenas. They they're adding different versions of existing arenas. Uh, Wasteland Nighttime and Coliseum Snowy. So kind of a holiday thing for that one. Are they ever going, speaking of holidays, is they ever going to get rid of Snow Day? I don't know. There's, I, there's a subset of people that only play that mode of the game. <laughs> and there's like 200 <laughs> of them left. The most I yeah. think I've seen playing Snow Day in the last six months yeah. has been like 400 yeah. people. Yeah, those playlists are getting pretty small. Uh, they're updating a couple of the old original cars with better visuals. They've been doing that every couple of updates. Uh, arena preferences. This is big for some people. You can, you can like and dislike arenas to increase or decrease the odds of finding those matches online. So That's people nice. that hate certain maps, especially because a lot of people aren't big on the, the non-standard maps they started releasing after the game. Uh, you can dislike those, maybe not encounter them as much online, but you're still going to have to play them. Yeah, there's a buddy of mine I play with quite often that every time Wasteland comes up, it's a fuck this map. Or mm -hmm. Neo Tokyo, it's a fuck this map. You see that a lot, yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing my party will have those turned. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to... I'm gonna... For, uh, for tournaments, do they pick just standard maps or is it just whatever nope. you get? Well, I think it's... Uh... There's like a, a map pick system. So if, or like a pick and a ban sort of thing. I don't know the details for it, but I think the main tournament, you don't normally see those. There's been a couple of instances of those where certain teams both agreed to play on it. But um, as they introduce more and more of these maps, so they're going to have to. 
Yeah, because I don't see actual like major tournaments with like a fifty thousand dollar pot wanting to play on yeah. maps like Neo Tokyo or some of the other lab maps. Yeah. Right, but then some of the underdog teams too can practice a lot on those maps and strategically pick maps to try to beat teams that may normally stomp all over them. So, and you know, it you adds another element cost for yeah, you know, home field yeah. advantage. Give that pick yeah. to that team. Yeah. So, so I don't know how they do the picks and the bands, or you know, different tournaments do different things. For that, it's cool a... because it it increases the skill ceiling for the top teams, which is good. Adds another layer of depth for, to the strategy to it. Yeah, I think they'll need to add a few more custom maps into the uh, variety to be able to make it be like a legitimate mm-hmm. strategy. Mm-hmm. Because right now, it's, <clears> if <throat> there's a ban, you pretty much take out fifty percent. Pretty of the, much, yeah. <clears throat> so I think if they add actually like five or six. Like, not huge differences, but maps with some different play styles you can do on them. I think that would actually add to the strategy then. Mm-hmm. And I like, and I while, like the variants. Yeah. While we're on this topic, too, the, the, the RLCS, the Rocket League Championship Series, is happening tomorrow and Sunday in Amsterdam. Live finals, LAN, uh, giant prize pool. I can't remember what the prize pool is. It's it's down to sixty four, over- isn't it? Sixty four players, or teams. No, no, no. It's down to eight teams. Eight, oh, four wow. from four from each region, four from Europe, four from uh, North America. I believe the prize pool is one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars for this these two days. Nice. This is the biggest one, then, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, one hundred and twenty five thousand. It's the, it's the second one, but it's much bigger than the last one. <laughs> First place gets fifty thousand dollars. Yep. That's a big prize pool for Rocket League because what well, a lot of those like the ECS or ELS or whatever it is is like what $100? ESL ESL it's like a hundred dollars to the winner yeah. yeah yeah but that's a you know this is actually backed by the developers and Twitch they've partnered with Twitch for this um all the whole crate system is helping fund these so that is true they're starting to get into uh borderland or not borderland holy crap dota land when it comes <laughs> yeah, to that. yeah yeah i don't yeah. know what the hell gearbox and borderland has to do with <laughs> any of that but right yeah like so dota yeah definitely too. if you want to see what this game's all about definitely take a look at that the the top teams play on a level far above what most people are probably have ever seen if they haven't watched it before so it's it's a, it's a really cool experience to watch in rock i know i've Go ahead, Tom. Oh, go ahead. All right. Uh, I know I've said this before, but you know when it when it comes to the big esports, you've got. Uh, I'm going to throw Overwatch in there, of course. Um, League of Legends, Dota two. I think Rocket League is really going to be a power to be reckoned with. It's still pretty early days for you know the the big esports and the giant prize pools to come in, like. You know, Valve throwing twenty million dollars at a tournament <laughs> is ridiculous and insane on a level yeah. of just insanity. But um, Dota, League of Legends, and even Overwatch to some extent, and you know CS:GO, but uh, no normal person cares about a CS:GO tournament. <laughs> but those games, esports are hard to watch, especially MOBAs, because you have to know what's going on, right? Yeah. Like in in Dota, you know, okay, well, they destroyed that big building thing, so they win. But yeah. that's not what people get excited about. And Rocket League, yeah. it's soccer with rocket cars that can fly. It's really yeah. easy to. If you've watched a soccer play. match, you can at least understand what's yeah. happening. If you I think this could get a lot more. Sports. Yeah, yeah, I think this could get a lot more normal people who aren't gamers into it. And uh, you know, let's let's be honest, without fans. Uh, Esports and real sports don't make money. They don't exist. Yeah. When Rocket League did something right immediately in like in the early days of it to help get this player base and fan base. <clears throat> it is cross platform. Yeah. PlayStation plays with PC, plays with Xbox. That way if yeah. one of these sections starts to fall in numbers, their playing or play, matchmaking doesn't suffer. It can still be paired with the other two. Games like Titanfall fucked up because their markets are split. So PC Titanfall players are having uh, issues because they couldn't get matches at first. Because I have to disagree. I no 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 no. The thing is, um, you can um, nerf it like Gears of War Four. What they did is when you're playing a certain game mode, you intermingle. But when you're doing competitive, you split them. 
Oh, you okay. split PC, rather. Controllers doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Or you force controller play. Yeah, you could do that. I just know when, with every developer that has tried to you know mix uh, controller and keyboard and mouse players in the same server, the <laughs> controller players get trounced every single time. On first-person yeah. shooters. Yeah, Rocket on League, shooters. Rocket League, <laughs> Rocket League is everyone designed plays for controller. With a controller. Yeah, no, I've played Rocket League with a keyboard and mouse. It is not a good experience. You absolutely need a controller to play Rocket League. Uh, and that's that's one of the reasons why it works cross-platform. I, I think shooters, you can make it work, but it's it's tricky to right. make it work well. Rocket League, it's just, you know, I guess if you want to play with a keyboard, you can, but good luck, bro. Yeah. There's like two people <laughs> that have been in any pro teams playing keyboard ever. That's amazing. Or, and the, none of them are going to be here so <laughs> the the championship. So But people have done that on the professional level. Yeah. That's yeah, mo- it's mostly yeah, it's well, it's mostly impressive. like the the lower end of the professional teams if you want to call them that, but still, yeah. That's, I mean, yeah, you know, it can I, be I done. Where, it's not impossible, I'm, but I know nowhere near decent at Rocket League and I know that playing with a, a keyboard and mouse is just not something that's that's to be done. Mm-hmm. A few friends of mine swore, "Oh no, I'll just play it that way. It's no big deal." You keep telling them, "Man, you need a controller. You need a controller." They play with it easier. once, and that's all it takes—just yeah. once. <laughs> just it changes just your entire so outlook. So yeah, that's what I've been playing. We got on a big tangent about that, but that's that's what's happening. <clears throat> watch the RLCS. It'll be on really early because it's in Europe, but you can watch the vods. I'm gonna have to check that out, but uh, the the Boston major is coming up here soon for Dota two, so I'm, nice. I'm hoping these two don't interfere with each other. Man, uh, I... And I'm I'm looking forward to it because there's oh there's so much Dota drama right now. It is it is tasty. It is delectable Dota drama. <laughs> I haven't loaded up Dota in like two months. I haven't been following the tournaments. I'm falling out of I... touch, man. So, so is is it my turn? Do, yeah, yeah, yeah I think it's safe to say it's your okay. turn. Yeah, go for it. Let I have play. been playing Dota. I have nice. been playing um, not not a lot of Dota, but some Dota, um, and that you know whatever it's it's Dota. But I had the most amazing experience ever. I played a game. It was a a forty minute stampede where my team got utterly destroyed. Uh, it was one of these games where, you know, five minutes in, everything's gone to hell and there's no way it can come back. Um, but my team and the enemy team, everyone on the server was talking in all chat. They were joking with each other. They were like, <laughs> shit, man, I can't believe I did that. That was so dumb on my part. Good kill, man. And like in Counter-Strike and shooters, when someone says, hey, nice shot, good kill, that's it's nice. It's not expected by any means. It's nice, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. But it's normally sarcasm. (laughs) Well, true. In Dota, you don't congratulate anyone for anything. Like this guy could go full pro on you. And I've seen like maybe twice in playing Dota over the years where someone says, hey, that was nice what you did to kill me. Um, but everyone was joking. It was great. It was a fun environment. Even when people were screwing up, no one was yelling at each other. There was no flaming in this game. I downloaded the replay just so <laughs> I could I could relive this moment. And it makes Dota sound so bad, but the community yeah. is so terrible that having a, a server full of really nice people is one of the greatest joys I have had playing that game. Yeah, that that's awesome. Often. Fantastic. That's good. Um, other than that, I have been playing CSGO, um, and I love CSGO. I'm okay at it. I'm nowhere near competent, but it's fun, and it's a game where I can pop in for 10 minutes and then leave, and the, you can't say that about Dota, because you're locked in for an hour. Um, only down so usually, yeah, I usually hit some, some CSGO before work or before bed, you know, just to, just to shoot some dudes. It's always fun. Um, I, I did get a cool kill that I'll have to tell you guys about. You can throw your gun, and by default, when you pick up a primary weapon, if you don't have one, you automatically switch to it. So this guy was using a hand cannon. He purchased a very expensive pistol, and he was shooting me. And I had, like, one bullet left in my SMG, so I threw it at him. 
there's an option in CSGO where you can turn off this functionality. Apparently, he didn't know that. So he's now <laughs> taking the extra 1.2 seconds to switch to the primary gun, where I just pull out my knife and stab him in the face. <laughs> oh, here's a good gun. Let me pick up this gun. Ah! Forcing him to switch guns so that you could stab him in the face. That's wonderful. It, that, that trick has worked in every version <laughs> of Counter-Strike. It is the shittiest thing to do with someone, but it is absolutely legitimate. That's that so funny. so shitty. I'd be so like pissed. That. Oh, he was. He was. He was raging so hard. It was great. Um, but uh, I am playing a game that neither of you guys know about, and I haven't talked a lot about it because I wanted to talk about it here. Mm-hmm. Crypt the Necro Dancer. I've heard good things about that. This is a music rhythm game um, that's a dungeon crawler slash roguelike. It is a really weird mashup. But mm-hmm. you get in the groove, you start bouncing with it. You have to hit the keys to like attack and go, you know, places on beat, or else uh-huh. you'll lose your your combo chain, and sometimes you'll take damage. Um, mm-hmm. It's really interesting. I'm, yeah. I'm not great at it, but it's a uh-huh. lot of fun. I've been really so close to picking that up a few times on Steam. Not gonna it's lie, like, it's, it's got a be couple cheap. bucks. Yeah, it's a couple bucks now. Well, to me, it's not the couple bucks. It's the for so many Steam sales, I thought it's just a couple bucks, and I still have a couple bucks yeah. out of my pocket that I haven't played. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's it's nice if you want to, you know, get in and, and chill. And if if you want to play something unique, uh, especially if you like roguelikes, give it a shot. Um, the the developers have done a really great thing with it. Uh, it's it's very well polished. You can tell they put their time into it, um, and. The music is pretty good. Nice. You, you get bouncing. That's important. It's nice. Is it doing um, good? It's not doom good. <laughs> well. But very few things are doom good. <laughs> so, what's been fueling my rage this week, for the vast majority of the week, is Doom. Uh, not old Doom, the new Doom 4. Um, confusingly titled Doom. <laughs> so, Doom 2016. Yes. Well, because it's the revamp uh, of the series. It's not supposed to be a continuation album. on the rest of the last. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. Kind of. Uh, if you do the thing that no Doom player has ever done, and you press tab and you start reading the text that Bethesda put in there, because you know no one from id Software wrote words uh, in this <laughs> game, um, you'll find out that uh, this game is actually related to the other ones, and Doom Guy is the same Doom Guy that's been Doom Guying all throughout Doom, the rest of the Doomed games. Um, wow. So they, they are slightly connected, uh, but like any good Doom game, the story is you are Doom Guy, you have gun, and you kill demons. And that's really the, the whole story. You don't really need more than that. Um I have, over the past several years, been playing all kinds of first-person shooters, and the vast majority of them, with notable exceptions like Borderlands, and I love the Borderlands series, uh, these shooters expect you to find a gray or brown colored chest-high wall and hide behind it, then play whack-a-mole with all of your enemies until you've killed them all, and then you move on to the next area. Um not to say that all games that have you know cover-based systems are bad, it's just they wouldn't work for a game like Doom, which is great because Doom doesn't work at all like that. Uh, the developers will actively try to kill you. The monsters will get more intense, they will run after you if you try to hide or take cover or run away from them. Yeah, um, there was actually a really good interview before the game came out with the uh, game developers where they... Um kind of explain this as a push forward game design where if you don't advance through the level you will die and you feel it you absolutely Mm -hmm. feel it if you hang around in doom uh while enemies are around you will get murdered very quickly um so how the game does this is it, it does so with the ai but it also does so because if you walk up to someone and punch them to death in these glory kills, which at, when I first saw them, I was like, oh, they turned Doom into a quick time event. And it <laughs> looked like that in the trailer, but it doesn't feel like that when you're playing it. It, it feels really good. It feels nice. like a Doom game. It's fast. It's bloody. It's violent. It's explosive, literally explosive. Um, <laughs> 
and the enemies explode into health and ammo pickups. So if you fire a bunch of rockets at a dude and he gets staggered, like he starts doing this flashing thing, which you, you'll see if you've seen any gameplay of Doom, you can run up to him and literally tear his head off. And then out of his head will pop out a bunch of rockets that you can use on the next guy and just continue <laughs> your wave of chaos and mayhem in the entire game place this way. Uh, but they didn't forget the old Doom standby. You know, walking up to, to walls and finding hidden doors and breaking through and getting secrets and weapons way before you're supposed to. This game is filled with that stuff. It's entirely optional, but the game won't hold your hand when it comes to getting way more powerful weapons before you're supposed to. Um, I well, found the super shotgun pretty early. And also the game has a um, upgrade mechanism that I believe has never been in a Doom game before. That is also very true. Um, and it's it's awesome. You don't need it to progress through the game. You can absolutely get through Doom without taking a single upgrade or finding any of the secrets. Uh, it will work like that. But if you do get the secrets, if you do upgrade, you can play even more awesome than you were playing before. So right now, <laughs> my Doom guy is immune to explosive red barrels. I can I, I literally was surrounded by demons and I found a red barrel, stood next to it, and put in my rocket launcher at the ground, which by the way, I'm also immune to my own rockets now. And I fired at the ground, blowing up everything around me, and everyone exploded into health and ammo pickups. I see so you should have been a man about it, got him right next to it, and then just chainsawed the fuck out of that barrel. I should have. I really <laughs> should have. And yes, the chainsaw is back from Doom 2. Uh, and it is just as glorious as ever. Um, nothing in the game feels truly overpowered in a bad way. It doesn't ever feel easy. Stuff can kill you, and it does regularly. Um, and I'm, I'm on medium difficulty right now. Um, it's wonderful. It's fantastic. Uh, I think it's still on sale right now, 50% off. Go grab it if you haven't. If you want a fast-paced, balls-to-the-wall, I'm going to kill everything because I can. Um, you you need doom uh in the music oh my god okay adam <laughs> you were explaining this to me last night about yes. the guy that basically created the whole doom sound landscape and how he he tackled this mm-hmm yeah, give us yeah there's a couple of there's a couple of videos actually the making of the music for doom that i'd recommend watching it's really interesting but um so he, he plays the main doom riff on a guitar and he's like well i wanted to make it sound more aggressive than this so i played it lower and he played it lower lower and it helped and he's like well no but i want it even lower so he picks up a nine string guitar and plays a variation of that riff on that guitar and it sounds very very heavy and aggressive the entire soundtrack is cool it's it's all it's like an intertwining of modern metal music and like some electronic elements too so it it really suits the atmosphere it's very intense you're gonna bang your head it's it's a good time well, when you get good going. Going. yeah <laughs> oh my god when you get going and that the riffs just kick in full volume you know with the sounds mm. of stuff exploding and, and demons screaming as you literally tear them in <laughs> half it's uh, it's such an empowering feeling. Um, well, it was funny last night because I'm playing I'm um, playing some games and I'm watching the Game Awards. Yeah. And Adam had just got I was listening to the soundtrack. He's like, "Man, this really makes you want to bang your head." And then all of a sudden, boom! They're playing Doom Three up on stage or Doom on yeah, stage at the Game Awards. They played they played some of the the soundtrack live. Yeah, the guy that wrote it played the guitar. And, and I'm just sitting here drummer. playing Rocket League, and also I'm like, "Holy mm. shit!" <laughs> I, I want to kill the other people. Screw making goals. I just want to demo these guys. And about the Doom story. So it was published by Bethesda. So mm -hmm. there, it, it's got the, the perfect Doom story. But if you want to read, you can hit tab and read about enemies and the environment and learn some backstory stuff. But you absolutely don't have to. Um, if you go to do that, do us a favor and uninstall it. And once you remember you were playing Doom, reinstall it and forget yeah. about that shit. 
<laughs> and speaking of installing, um, buy this on PC because, you know, that's where Doom's supposed to be. Um, if you're playing with this with a mouse and keyboard, do yourself a favor and don't. Um, if you don't have a gaming PC, do yourself a favor and buy one. So with with Doom, um, I completely forgot where I was going with that. Anyway, uh, the Doom storyline <laughs> is great uh, because... Five minutes, or not even five minutes, 30 seconds into the game, you walk up to this monitor, and this guy is, like, explaining, like, this big backstory. You know, he's going to launch into this thing. He gets 15 minutes into this big monologue, and Doom Guy punches the monitor, grabs his gun, and walks out of the room. It's just awesome. It is the perfect Doom game. So. <laughs> nice. Yeah, if if you can, absolutely pick it up. I will be streaming more of it tonight. Um, well, maybe tonight. We'll see. We've mm -hmm. got a lot of stuff. Uh, but uh, Game Awards, speaking of those, um, we'll cover that right after this topic. Um, <laughs> see, I almost skipped you again. I keep doing that. Uh, so No Man's Sky is has come out of radio silence. What the hell is going on? So I didn't quite get to that this week with all the games that I was playing that were not discussed. Yeah, oh. that's what I forgot. <laughs> this because, power know, just threw me. I was yeah. um, too busy playing on my Rocket League and Pokemon to uh, quite get to it. But uh, this is a very big thing from no or, uh, Hello Games. Um, you can hate on them all they want. Yes, they were deceiving. Yes, a lot of bad shit happened. And yes, they were quiet for a long time. They've recognized the issues with the game. And it seems like they're trying to pivot it out of what it was starting to be and into something possibly new. So there's now going to be three different game types. There's the original. There's going to be a survival one, which they actually had to overhaul how you interact with certain things because survival was so hmm. brutal. If you couldn't use certain items fast enough, you would die by the time you got to use them. Because hmm. the way the shield mechanic works, you get specialized shields to prevent certain types of radiation and temperature, and you have to mm -hmm. fuel them. It'll tell you when you're low, but it doesn't let you say, hey, hit T to use these elements you have to fuel it. You have to go into the UI to do it. Oh. Hmm. So I think they put some systems around that to streamline that a little bit. Also, the um, uh, four, or third is going to be the base building. Um, they are allowing you to take an abandoned base and actually build out on this. You're going to be able to um, have NPCs in there to help with research. You're going to be able to raise certain crops for rare minerals. Um, you're going to be able to expand it out to however big you want it, need it, blah, blah, blah. Um, this exact same functionality is going to be available in cargo ships as well. They're going to allow you to buy cargo ships, which you can um, store resources on. Because ideally, with this base building, you're going to need more resources. This is just something to help you burn through the game and actually have a reason for all the shit they put in it for seemingly no reason. As yeah, well as... Like, huh? It sounds like they're addressing that issue that a lot of people had with it at the beginning. That there was all the stuff to explore, but no real reason to do it. No objectives, nothing to do other than explore. Yes. So it sounds like they're kind which of addressing is, that. Which is not what they hinted at or, or showed in any of their trailers, which I think yeah. really led to all the, the hate. <laughs> See, I was in front of on that one and I was screaming that there is not a story of this. If you're going into this wanting something with a story, wanting something with a purpose, this game never told you that there was going to be anything. This game was going to be an explore, exploration game. They've realized that the way they were going about exploration, no one wanted. So they pivoted, and this is now what they're calling their foundation release, or foundation update. The, their whole idea is this is going to be the foundation of the game to come. In other words, hearing about um, six months to a year, we'll have a full game finally. After paying $60 <laughs> that, three that months fast? ago. That fast? Yeah. You think it'll be only a year? I think in three years, you'll finally leave, as you call the early access phase of No Man's Sky. 
I think in three years, it'll be somewhere near what they showed at E3. I will tell you this much. This game will get to a state where it's a decent game before Star Citizen ever releases. Okay, that, yeah. But, <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be a decent game before Half-Life 3 comes out. But hey, mm-hmm. you know, the heat death of the universe will happen before those two things ever come to fruition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, that game is going to go to bed, though. From what I've been yeah. seeing, players are not coming back. They're not really wanting to give it another effort. Its last ditch is going to be when it gets marked down to 20 bucks, getting people who've never played it. So how well did that sell? Because what kind of money does Hello Games have? I mean, they're, they're not selling the Foundation update. They're just pushing it, right? So there's active development costs going into this. Are mm-hmm. they burning fuel they don't have? I mean, what's, what's the revenue look like? So it was a small team, indie company. There was a partnership with Sony. So I don't know what Sony took. Because I'm sure Sony yeah. gave them advances. I don't know what Sony took, but I know the game sold fairly well. And it was a $60 early access, not complete game shipped in physical yeah. media. So, Which yeah. we, we can't, I'm, I'm going to stress, do not, if you're going to hate on No Man's Sky, do not direct your hate to Hello Games. Direct your hate to Sony, who invariably pushed this thing two years before it was supposed to come out. Yeah, so, um, fuck Nelson, just, or Masterson, sorry. D-Lad, um, <laughs> just link me to a site where there is currently about 5,000 active players. That's more time. than I expected. At, at a time. It, it's more than what it was, but the all-time peak was 212,000 on Steam. And it's wow. at 5,600, two months after launch. Well, three months, I'll say. So, yeah. That, I know there's at least three people playing Dota right now. <laughs> I'm not wrong. There is at least three people. Uh, and then after that, I think everything we have going forward is probably going to be all game awards related information out of around and from including yeah. some news on something. I'm actually really looking forward to the new Zelda. The uh, yes. elder scrolls Hyrule. Yeah. Elder scrolls brings you a uh, legend <laughs> of Zelda. I don't know how to feel about this. And, and so we, we learned absolutely nothing new at the Game Awards. We got to see a new area, but everything we've seen has already been shown You know, when IGN did their like 90-hour, okay, it was like a, a two-hour video where they played Breath of the Wild, um, which showed a, a lot of the game and a lot of the mechanics. I still don't know how to feel about this. On one hand... You know, one of my dream games in the the last podcast was Bethesda taking over Hyrule and taking The Legend of Zelda and making something like this. On the other hand, Nintendo's doing it, and I really don't want them to screw this up. I I think that it needs to happen. It's doing something different with the franchise, which has needed to happen for years. But I'm very afraid that they won't get it right, or it'll it'll leave Zelda too far behind and it'll become something entirely different. And I think that's not something that's going to be bad. It can use some new elements to it. How many times can Zelda say, or wow, I must said that how many times can Link save Zelda? <laughs> well, there was that one time that Zelda saved Link, but we're not allowed to talk about that game. <laughs> but no, I think Nintendo, what they do tends to be, if nothing else, well polished. Mm-hmm. It could be bad, yes. but well polished. Yes. So we know the game mechanically will be adequate, at at minimum, adequate. And what they've been showing to the game, it looks like a fairly good open world game. There's things you have to manage, different equipment you can get outside of just like, you know, the two different swords, different Mm -hmm. weapons for different enemies. It looks like it's going to be a good, solid open world game brought to you by Nintendo, which feels really weird to say. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So in, in Zelda games, you always, you know, you go to the dungeon, you get your item, and that's how you upgrade your, you know, your abilities is, hey, I have the hook shot now. Now these parts of the world are accessible to me because I know how to do this thing. And I have the item to do this thing. If you can just pick up stuff, and I, I mean, not all the items are going to be like that, of course, but, you know, if, if I can get a bow by just running and stabbing a guy with a bow and taking it from him. I don't know. I, I don't know how it would play out. I, I guess we'll just have to see. 
I think it looks pretty cool. Um, I like the visual style of it a lot. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's very interesting how they're doing it. It's um, it's not the ultra realistic, but it's still not Wind Waker esque. It's a yeah, nice balance. Um, one thing, and this is going to mean nothing to anyone who's not a Zelda freak. This basically, uh, this game is set uh, further in history. Uh, and it does validate the Wind Waker series timeline because there are three main timelines in uh, in Zelda, and uh, the Wind Waker one is the one Breath of the Wild is part of. At least that's what's making sense right now to the community. So there's three different like canon paths for Zelda. Oh yes, yes. If you look at the Hyrule Historia, which is their big like thick encyclopedia on all things Zelda, there are three canon paths uh, to the timeline. And they all contain different games. They all do different things. Um, in, in one of the timelines, amazingly enough, uh, Link fails and is killed. Uh, and then is resurrected, you know, hundreds of years later as another Link. Um, and, and that's how, how that works. And then oh. the other two, you know, either, either he wins and everything's fine, or he wins and the world is destroyed, uh, essentially. Which is basically how the Wind Waker one works. It's interesting. Hmm. Nice. I'm not that big of a Zelda guy, but I am interested in this game, and I really yeah. could care less about the prior stories. <laughs> just yeah. to be honest, <laughs> keep a close look on it. Um, so, also announced oh, at the Game Awards, um, a new Mass Effect game. Yeah. Did you? It, did you guys play Mass Effect? Yes. Obviously, yes. Tom did. I know yes. Tom did. <laughs> I played I did it not a little, bit. not a whole yeah. lot. How? How do you put Mass Effect a <laughs> little bit? Because I never actually owned it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Broke so, as gonna, college Okay. Yeah. Right. There's, there's like the Mass Effect trilogy disc for the PS3. Just mm-hmm. go out, buy that. It's got every game in it. It's got all the DLC. It's the best value you can get for your money. It's 150 hours in a disc. Nice. But oh my god, I yeah. love Andromeda, Mass Effect. Yeah, Andromeda supposed to, supposedly released next year, spring time. Um, it's set 600 years after the events of the original trilogy. Uh, takes place in an entirely new galaxy. Um, it looks pretty good. It's very pretty. So, um, <laughs> fun thing about that, um, it takes place after the events of the trilogy. But as far as the characters are concerned, it is between the events of 2 and 3. So um, they have, right. so Andromeda, got, I don't remember exactly when it was announced, when it was going to happen, but they've actually brought forward some of the story. And some of the story is that this Andromeda is like a, coloniz- a colonization. Like the col- they fear that the, I can't remember what the main bad guys the are. The Reapers. The Reapers are going to come in and destroy everything. So they send mm-hmm. off this Andromeda ship, or no, they send off this ship to Andromeda to try to colonize out that way. They do that between the events of 2 and 3. By the time they get there, everything from Mass Effect has already happened. Mm. But to them, they are stuck in the time frame between 2 and 3. That's interesting. I didn't like what they showed at the Game Awards. I was very disappointed in what they showed at the Game Awards. Hmm. I felt what they showed was just, hey, here's a new Mass Effect. Yeah. I I actually, I kind of, I felt betrayed and I really, I don't want this to be this way, but it is because this is how games always, always trend towards, especially slightly actiony RPGs. So Mass Effect 1 came out and there was virtually no action. Basically, if you didn't have the stats to shoot a certain gun, you would always miss with that gun. You would basically shoot yourself with the shotgun if you didn't know how to use a shotgun. Um... Two came out, it was a little more action-focused, it was a little less RPG-focused. Three came out, and it was a shooter that had leveling. The the RPG elements, aside from character interactions, were gone. The gameplay RPG elements. Um, This one looks like more of the same in the Mass Effect 3 vein, which is fine. I loved Mass Effect 3 for what it was. Um, But no one plays... Okay, I shouldn't say no one. The people who actually care about the Mass Effect series do not play Mass Effect for the gunplay, right? You don't mm-hmm. you don't play Final Fantasy for the combat system. No one does that. 
You play it to meet interesting characters, to hear a great story, uh, and especially for Mass Effect, to make choices that will later impact your uh, the other things in the, the series. I want to inject two things. And they showed virtually things. none of that. I they only inject, showed yeah. gunplay. Two things. A, I know of least five people that will scream at you for the Final Fantasy. A lot of people I know <laughs> like the grinding aspect of Final Fantasy. I don't get how. Grinders. But um, <laughs> secondly... I don't think Mass Effect players play Mass Effect anymore after the way 3 ended, initially. I didn't hate the ending of 3. I was not on that bandwagon. I didn't think it was great. I didn't think it was terrible. The, but to the effect of after everything you've done, not a whole lot mattered. They just paraded different people in front of you, but the end game was the same. Right. After- I, I will say the ending of 2 was far more powerful than the ending of 3. That Mm -hmm. said, the entire experience of Mass Effect 3 makes up for the ending in every way possible. It takes takes a whole lot for a video game to make you cry, and Mass Effect does that on several occasions. (laughs) Yeah, the closest I came to that was uh, season one of um, Walking Dead. Yeah, right? Oh, yeah. Right? That that, that was close. (laughs) So speaking of which, Telltale has a couple of games announced for this. Yes, they actually are uh, bringing forward Season 3 of The Walking Dead. Um, the intro trailer to that was actually fairly interesting. Uh, there was a nice little thing where a girl says her grandpa woke back up, which made me laugh and chuckle because everyone and their brother knows where that's going. Yeah, it's not usually a good thing. That little clems there at the end of the trailer, so um, at least you know... Not so little anymore. Not so little, but at least you know she's going to be a figure in it. And then the one I got excited about. I don't know how many of you guys are uh, Marvel fans out there, but um, Guardians of the Galaxy by Telltale. Yes. (laughs) I think that they can tell a story better than almost any company in the business right now. And you give them the ability to be lighthearted with it. I'm excited. I'm very excited for for the Guardians Telltale game. Uh, You know, as with everything Guardians of the Galaxy, though, I think I'm more excited about the Guardians of the Galaxy Telltale game soundtrack than I am about the game itself. (laughs) I think it'll be the same exact one for the movie. If they don't make it that way, they're fucking up. Eh, I don't know. They could do a completely original soundtrack with more awesome old music. I'd be okay with that. I, I mean, it was just an announcement trailer. We have no idea what the gameplay is going to look like, who, what the characters are going to be, anything about the story. They just said, hey, we're making this, and everyone clapped, uh, which I'm yeah. okay with. Well, I think we have an idea what the gameplay is going to be like, just off the fact it's Telltale. Right, right, right. It'll be a Telltale game with Guardians of the Galaxy. If you were not a <laughs> fan of very story-driven games, point and click with not a whole lot of fast interactions, they are not for you. Yeah, no, this is this is very, you know, interactive storybook and less video game. I think Metal Gear Solid five. But no, not it's not long. that no. much. Not much. <laughs> not not like that. Well, you actually say, get to play the game. <laughs> oh, geez. And then there was um, a game announced that I am not familiar with. So I'm going to lean on you two for this. Prey was announced last night. I played the shit out of Prey when it came out, which was a very long time ago. Um, so Prey originally, we're going to go back and I'm going to give you a little history lesson. Prey was supposed to come out, I want to say in 1996. It started its development, I want to say, on the Quake engine. I don't have Wikipedia in front of me right now, but it had been built for a very, very, very long time. It was like it was neck and neck with Duke Nukem Forever for the game that was never going to come out. And what made Prey cool, why people were excited about it instead of saying, well, it's just an FPS and it's never going to come out, who cares, is uh, Prey had this amazing technology that no one had heard of before called portal technology, uh, where there were certain areas of the map where you could walk through and it pop out the other side, but not like, not like doom where you, you know, it, it literally teleports you, but 
you could use the portal to shoot through, to push items through, to move people through. Um, it, it was really cool and really innovative. Uh, and it just, it never came out. And then eventually, I want to say about 10 years later, it did release. Um, it had a very cool uh, Native American versus alien invader vibe to it. Um, the whole game was weird. It was kind of creepy. It had portals, it, it, the it had gravity warping. The whole game was this sci-fi epic. It was amazing. And it was an open and closed loop. After the game ended, that was it. You're done. And I thought it was the greatest thing ever. And then two months later, Portal comes out. And I completely <laughs> forgot about the Portal technology and Prey because Portal uh -huh. just blew everything out of the water. Right. I think Portal blew everyone out of the water when that released. Oh, yeah, of course. No, yeah. One, so was, no one was ready for that. Everyone mm -hmm. forgets about the Portal technology and Prey, which, you know, before Portal came out, was the greatest thing anyone had ever seen. Um, so it, it kind of ended. Um, this Prey... They said it was a spiritual successor. It mm -hmm. steals the name. It looks absolutely nothing like the original Prey. Um, the uh, think you know generic, weird, gross aliens, and you're a guy with a bunch of guns and magic and portals, and you can kill them. This one looks like a time loop, sci-fi horror epic thing with aliens and stuff. Maybe aliens? Maybe they're creatures of the night? I don't know. It, it doesn't looks, look, it doesn't it looks look cool, bad. Though. I think it looks really cool, but it I didn't play the original, so I don't have any investment in whatever series it is a spiritual successor of. If they would have called it anything else, I'd be less confused. It looks yeah. really cool. It's just not Prey at all. I think they literally just said, hey, we need a name. Uh, I don't know, no one made a Prey game in a while. Cool, let's use that. So name aside, though, could be cool. Yeah, yeah, it I'm, could I'm be a cool. sucker for sci-fi horror stuff, so it's right up my alley. I'm looking forward to, to seeing Fu more on that. I'm hoping futuristic Silent Hill, or at least yes. futuristic Resident Evil. I mean, that oh, would be yeah. cool. That would be great. That would be really great. So there were two other uh, game teased at this event last night. The first one and the more minor of them, Halo Wars 2. They've released a story trailer. Uh, pretty interesting. It's about Brute, the first Brute to defy the Covenant, which implies that it's probably early Halo, pre-Halo, up to the point of Halo 2 is when that part of the trailer was taking place. Um, but cool thing that they announced, pre-order Halo Wars 2, you receive Halo Wars 1 with all of its DLC. That sounds like a pretty good deal. I'm normally yeah. against pre-orders, but and you're getting a whole free game out of it. Yeah, I've only got one. Cool. I've only got one question though. If you pre-order, do you get the Breaking Benjamin song that was in Halo Two as an MP3 with it? I wish. <laughs> I'm not buying it unless I get that MP3. <laughs> that guitar just starting off. It's like, where's the choir? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then um. Have you guys ever played a Halo Wars? I played I, a demo or something a long time ago. Yeah. I was very impressed with how well it played on a controller. There I do, yeah, I do remember that being pretty intuitive. There was two RTSs I've ever played on console that worked. Not StarCraft. That was fucking terrible on the 64. Yep. <laughs> but End War by Tom Clancy. It's voice commands mixed with a pretty simple interface. Let it play very well. And Halo Wars. Really, <laughs> really enjoyed Halo Wars. I remember when I saw the, the first teaser, uh, I believe in Game Informer for Halo Wars. I was like, oh, RTS on a console. Yeah, this is going to crash and burn. And it came out and it was pretty good for an RTS on a console. Yeah. PC player, like RTS fans that play on PC all the time, they hated it because it was well, a stupid yeah. little simplistic thing. But for console players, hell, it was the only RTS around. Right. And it wasn't, so I, I gotta give them props. It wasn't bad. You didn't have to control like a regular RTS. I'm not saying it played as well as a Command and Conquer or a StarCraft, something like that. But it was a competent... RTS. It was fun. For, for what they had to work with, I think they did a great job on it. Yeah. And then the last tease that they, mm -hmm. well, not the last tease they show, last tease we're going to cover is one that I know PT. that... PT! 
Adam uh, is oh. very happy about. Oh, very yeah. I'm much. so excited. Death Stranding, the new Hideo Kojima game. It looks so cool. It looks so cool. I'm excited. So you so, were so a what? Kojima fan for oh, a yeah. while. Oh, yeah. Metal Gear Solid series is great. Um, that PT demo was one of the coolest horror experiences I've yes. seen. Oh I'm, I'm very sad they couldn't do Silent Hills, but I'm, it's, it's cool to see him doing something again in that kind of weird, creepy, whatever fashion this is going to be. I don't even know what it's going to be. It's the, the trailer was very strange. <laughs> it's very strange. I don't know why I'm excited about Death yeah. Stranding. I am. Uh, but we literally know nothing about the game except for Kojima, Del yeah. Toro, Mats, and and uh, what Norman Reedus. And that's literally, th- those are the only things we know about the game. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. It's kind of yeah. sci-fi. It, kind we know of there's a baby in a jar. And tentacle monsters that yeah. attack tanks. It had a yeah, rad there's... song in one of the trailers. Uh-huh. That's literally it. We know nothing about the gameplay. We don't. This could be a first-person shooter. It could be a puzzle game. For all yeah. we know. Also, but it's so add, it's so weird. It's hard not to be intrigued. Who it's brings a, a baby game? to yeah. a war? You don't do that. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> also, um, that reminded me of Doctor Fetus a little bit from um, oh, Binding of yeah. Isaac. Yeah. For all you Binding of Isaac guys out there, this is the prequel. To binding yeah. Isaac. <laughs> That's what this is. This is what happened to Isaac's father. Yep. Yeah. He but no, I'm really excited Dr. about Fetus. this uh, upcoming movie game, whatever it's going to end up being. Uh, yeah. Expect cut scenes, of course. I think the but level it, of unknown is honestly the only reason I'm intrigued. I'm With what they've yeah. shown, this is possibly going to be something entirely fucked up. Just crazy yeah. over the top fucked up. It seems like there's some potential for some controversy, some disturbing stuff. So I think I think now I'm I'm gonna go totally conspiracy theory on you guys. <laughs> All right, so Do bear it. with me. Do it. Okay. So before Konami went full dementia, they Kojima was working on he said, Okay, Metal Gear is basically done. Right, I finished it. I, I finished it in four, but they wanted another one, so I gave them another one, and now I'm really done with Metal Gear. I want to do something different, and I think I want to go into horror. So he teams up with Del Toro. The guys become buddies, right? Because they've been hanging out, they've been talking a lot. Uh, they both talk about each other and their arts and, and the, their particular crafts and ways of building things. And their fucked um, up visions. And their fucked up <laughs> visions. And they teamed up and made PT. And then Konami got dementia, and we had to put uh, we had to put her in a home. Um, and now Death Stranding comes out, and we figure out just yesterday that del toro and kojima are working on the same game del toro is in the fucking trailer he's making a horror game he has to why on earth would you would you bring in you know the the king of japanese creepy horror if you're not making a horror game Mm. it has to be but if you notice too, it, it didn't mention his name on the the credit screen. It didn't. <laughs> it didn't at all, and I don't know so why that is. Maybe maybe he's it's just an playing honor. a part in it. Yeah, maybe he's just playing a part in it or something. That would be odd. That would be really weird. But I mean, this is Kojima. He could yeah, get away. It's already going to be weird. weird. <laughs> it's already going to be weird. You can watch ten seconds of that trailer and know it's going to be weird. It, I mean, hell, Metal Gear Solid Four had a ps3 commercial in it yeah. snake you have to change to disc two and snake <laughs> goes what and Otacon says oh that's right this is a playstation 3 it's a blu-ray disc with 50 gigs of capacity never mind snake keep on playing and then yeah. the com link closes and snake goes what the hell i love the breaking the fourth wall in that series oh my god it's great it's so goofy so yeah, well, yeah i'm, I'm looking stranding. forward to it yeah keep an eye out for that if you like horror, if you like weird things, if you like whatever that is, post-apocalyptic weirdness, check that out. Fucking There's madness. skeletons so, in it. I saw yeah. skeletons. So speaking of the gaming awards, shall we go over the winners in the categories? Yes. All yeah, right. we, we can kind of glance over a few of these. Uh, game of the year wasn't what I was going to vote for, but definitely uh, deserving. Overwatch brings that home. 
I was I really that. I was really pulling for Doom on that. Yeah. yeah. But I could see it. A lot of people are Overwatch is huge. And there'll be a theme with this. The game direction went to Overwatch. <laughs> Narrative went to Uncharted 4. I really thought that was going to go to Firewatch. I, 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 I didn't, heard mixed things about Firewatch. I heard that yeah. either either it was a great game with this deep, like untold story, or you literally walk around the woods doing nothing, talking to someone on a radio where nothing happens. It's a it's walking a walk- simulator. It is a walking simulator. And I've played some great walking simulators, but I just heard mm-hmm. that Firewatch wasn't a good one. That said, mm-hmm. I haven't played it. So, yeah. Then best art direction went to Inside. Okay. Yeah, that's. I think that's a shoe inside. In. Yeah, inside shoe in. I wouldn't say shoe in, man. Okay, so so Firewatch, Firewatch had good art direction. Overwatch had amazing art direction, but inside, it's like if you took Limbo and literally polished everything that wasn't absolutely perfect already about that game, just from everything from the animations to the environments to the the lighting effects. Everything in that game, I think, is perfectly put together, graphically speaking. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. And then next, we have the best music. Tom's game, Adam's favorite music, I think, of the year, Doom. I do not agree with this. You don't? Really? I don't. I do not. So on this list, list we have Battlefield 1, Inside, Thumper, Doom, the winner should have been Res. Res Infinite. Have you have either of you guys played Res? No, not no. at all. I've never okay. even seen it. We we used to talk about this a lot on on the first iteration of the 72 Pin Connector podcast just because it was so fucking weird. Res is basically Star Fox where you every enemy you kill makes a beat in the song. Oh. And if you kill enough enemies, you level up and you add another subtract to the song. And as you play better, the game music changes. It gets you into the feel. It was one of the first games to do this. It started on the PS2 and I believe the Dreamcast. Um, so if if you suck, if you keep getting hit, if you start dying, the song will like fade out. You will lose pieces and in, in underlying beats of the song until you just die. Um, but it has one some of the most amazing sound direction and and music i've ever seen you get into a trance when you play res just following the music shooting things just becomes second nature an extension of your own body it it, res is so weird that in japan they sold what's called the trance vibrator for the ps2 that sounds bad (laughs) just throwing that out there that sounds terrible it was an official peripheral sold with the game official that sounds and like a kind of peripheral that you're a very, very terrible son and you tell your mother to buy for you. And <laughs> it's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, and it follows along with the beat. And as you do better, the number and intensity of vibrations increase. Wow. Yeah. So uh, they, they actually um, did emulate that in one of the later releases that did not have the trans vibrator where you could use another controller that would act as your trance vibrator if you needed one to, you know, get into your trance mode. Um, <laughs> I do think so. So I think Res should have won that, but Doom would be the next best choice because, oh yeah. my God, Doom. <laughs> the bears. All right. So, so, so other next. things we had, I'm just going to kind of go over some of the bigger ones. You have um, Best Indie Game went to Inside. Other notable notables were Firewatch and The Witness, Stardew Valley, Hyperlight Drifter, not familiar with. Really? This is cool. Stardew is cool. Valley, I actually been wanting to pick up. Um, it's so I haven't played it, but my significant other has put like seven million hours into it approximately. Um it's really good. If you've ever wanted the world's greatest harvest moon game, this is absolutely it. We got best VR game went to Res Infinite. Um, they have Thumper on there, which is only a PSVR. I think that went to Vive as well. That might have helped Vive and Oculus. Yeah. Uh, ba- best action game, Doom. Thought yeah. that was pretty simple. 
Yeah, big surprise there. <laughs> Best action adventure game went to Dishonored 2. So outside of the PC issues, that game has been getting amazing reviews everywhere. I hear nice. good things about it on consoles. Yeah. And hopefully oh, they got hey, to figure I out wonder, for PC. I wonder who won Best Fighting Game this year. Oh, wait, <laughs> did, did Capcom put out literally anything? Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, Capcom wins. <laughs> What Street game is fighter. that? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Look, it doesn't course. really matter. Capcom put yeah. out a fighting game. Whatever they put out, that wins. Right. And how the, did, uh, how yeah. did they give best strategy game to Civ Six? It's been out for like twelve hours. Because it's Civ Six. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess, that's I guess the that's same true. concept of <laughs> the last one we just discussed. Oh, a new Civilization game. All right. So there's that. <laughs> uh, best RPG actually went to The Witcher Three: Wild Hunt Blood and Wine DLC. Which we, we were talking Which about this offline. Yeah. I would be mad at this because a DLC took a full games award, but it's a Witcher DLC, which is more game than most games. <laughs> Probably, yeah. I haven't played it, but I'd really like to. The only other ones I see on there really notable is um, Dark Souls 3. And, is, that, uh, I, is that an RPG? That, I don't that's kind of an, uh, it's action RPG I death think, simulator thing. I think Deus Ex. <laughs> Deus Ex is more RPG than Dark Souls. There's uh, there's a lot of RPG in Dark Souls. Have you looked at the stat page? Yeah, that's true. There's like a hundred stats. Everything's an RPG. Well, yeah. The Sorry. sports game, nobody cares. Forza. Best multiplayer, Overwatch. Yeah. Most anticipated? Why are we giving this away? Why is why is that a category? Um, I don't know. Because Nintendo no. had to get something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here you go. Here's the Legend. Uh, Legend of Zelda. Which Breath I still Wild. think I would disagree. Out of the no. Red out, Dead Redemption Two, but yes. that's most biased in, because that's just what I want. Game. <laughs> Half think, Life Three. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's all. Every year, that's that's the award <laughs> most anticipated. See, now I don't think it's most anticipated, but those people who care for it care for it so much. That they're loud enough, everyone else has to fucking hear them. Yeah. Yeah. Tom. Anyway. <laughs> and then they had um some other weird categories like trending oh. gamer and stuff like that. What? what the Best hell? esports team was Cloud Nine. Best and esports game. Yeah. Overwatch. See what that really bugs the hell out of me. Interesting because that of how sh- it's not been out that long. That should not have won. It should have been either Dota 2 or League of Legends. Street Fighter V doesn't have an eSport. Yes, no they do. Yeah. Yes, they do. Well, okay, look, when, when you're getting beat by Every Super game has Smash Bros. <laughs> <laughs> when you, okay, more players, more eSports players play Super Smash Brothers Melee than Street Fighter V professionally. That's an issue. Yeah. All right. Also, Best eSports player, they have no one on here from uh, from Dota. But they do have someone from Super Smash Brothers on Team Liquid. Well, because you think Dota's more of a team thing, which yeah. shocks me that League of Legends what? is on there. But. Yeah, they've got some guy from League on here. Hmm. Trending Gamer. I don't know who any of these people are. But Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Me. Some of those categories I kind of thought were bullshit that they did. But the one thing that bugged me about eSport, Rocket League wasn't even on the list. Yeah. Yeah. It's still pretty small. It, it, it's part of the whole big scene is. Yeah, but not it's got a higher sure. potential than results right now. I think okay, it's got more yes. players. It's got more esports professionals than Street Fighter Five does. It absolutely should have been on this <laughs> list. Street Fighter Five's got like six people that play competitively. Yeah, and they they all go to the local arcade. So I so think there, that's there, pretty there's much something. There's something I wanted to talk about. Best yeah. family game went to Pokemon uh, Go. Oh, yeah, how the fuck is that a family game? I don't know. Everyone, it's it's because look, the whole family can play it. They can just, play it together. They it's can go just out like on dinner, walks to the park. where your whole family stares at their phones and they don't interact with each other. And now you can do that outside. So I guess technically, it's just like family time. Hey, they interact a little bit. Hey, there's a there's a ghastly over here. Oh, look, there's a there's a Charmander. Whatever. I mean, Jeez. and the the rest of these are just. You know, an excuse to get kids' games anywhere in the show. See, to me, family games, I think like the Monopoly, when they actually make a Monopoly game, because those are actually kind of fun. I'm thinking Minecraft. No. No? No. I think more like a a party type of game, or a co-op game, like Overcooked. Something like that, where it's 
forced co-op, sitting on the couch, playing together. Yeah. Actually interacting with each other. I, I don't know what that is. What is that? Sorry, Tom. Some people, <laughs> you know, with human interaction. Nah, I joke. But I think that's pretty much all we really need to talk about for the Game Awards. Yeah, I think so. Um, there is one other tidbit of news I wanted to make sure we got out there. Um, uh-huh. Titanfall 2. This game has been oh, getting yeah. great reviews. Um, EA, in attempt to uh, boost numbers to get people to buy it, or is actually handing out a free week. Oh, actually, I don't know how long it is. Free right weekend. Now, it's free. This weekend. Yeah. Jump on. Free multiplayer. Try it out. Looks amazing. Supposedly has a great feel. Very fluid. This is Respawn Studios. Head designer is this guy responsible for the original Medal of Honor series revamp. The um, Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare 2. This guy is, knows what he's doing. Makes very good The good shoes. Modern Warfares. Yes. So I highly and, uh, recommend... They're- there is a campaign for everyone who complained about that for the first game. Yes. And yeah. the campaign from what I've been told is they took what was fun in the game and just mm-hmm. put story around it rather than make you play through this story. They said, mm-hmm. fuck it. We want the campaign to be fun. We don't care how yeah. much sense the story really makes. But the campaign is not a part of the free weekend. No, it's just it, the multiplayer mood, but still that's why you would play it anyway. So, I think that's about all I have. And you guys have anything else you want to throw out there for this week? Yes. If you can about find a gaming Crypt, fact. If you can <laughs> find Crypt of the Necrodancer for under $3, go buy it. And if you can find Doom for under $300, go buy it. <laughs> nice. All right. So, give you the quick rundown. So, we'd love to hear from you guys. Anything we've done wrong, think we can do better, or just shit you want us but, to talk about but, on the podcast. But our gaming fact... You you totally skipped our gaming fact. We could have got it after I did the spiel, but you cut me off. Go ahead. Get it in there. I was going to let Adam do this one. Oh, okay. I don't even want to know what it is anymore. All these interruptions going on. I know, right? So the beginning jingle of Zelda Ocarina of Time is actually the same as the warp whistle from Super Mario Brothers 3. It's just slowed down. So the same melody, same notes, slowed down in both games. Just a little throwback. A little Ocarina for you. So, uh, where was I? We would love to hear from you all. So we have several ways for you to get at us with topics, corrections, general questions. You can send us an email at fanmail at 72pinconnector.com. You can tweet at us at 72PCPodcast. You could comment on our YouTube channel at 72PinConnector or on our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash 72PinConnector. Or you could always visit our website if you need to download our podcast if you can't find it on a subscription at 72 pinconnector.com and i think that is all we have for you this week so until next week game on see everyone bye